In today's video, we're going to talk about freedom from religion. Um, if you followed some of the teachings that I share for any length of time, you'll realize that I have a, a real passion to help people walk away from a religious transactional way of relating to God. Uh, many people have been introduced to God uh, through a religious lens rather than a grace filled lens and uh, it has led to a high level of functional Christians uh, who simply have learned how to interact with God based upon what they do for God rather than who they are to God. And because of <clears throat> message of grace. Uh, it has taken a bad rep over the years, but um, today we're going to talk about the five stages of freedom uh, from religion, or another way of saying it is embracing the message of grace. And even when I say that phrase, I understand that there's certain maybe feelings or emotions that come with it, or maybe even some caution, uh, but I really want to encourage you that grace is not a bad word. It's not something you need to be scared of. It's not something that will cause you to uh, drift away from God. In fact, it, it's the very thing that empowers you to live the life that God has called you to live. Uh, but we are talking about freedom from religion. Uh, religion just simply being that you are attempting, or let me just say it like this, the spotlight is on you. The spotlight is on either your sin or it's on your righteousness. And you never feel like you truly uh, can relate to God freely because uh, you, you've fallen short so many times or that you have this sense of pride because of how well you're doing at this thing called the Christian life. Um, and so the Lord took me through a, a, a season, uh, nearly three years in length, of really setting me free from a functional way of seeing how I relate to Him. Um, where I no longer have to transact with God, that I don't receive from Him based upon what I do for Him. I receive from Him based upon who I am to Him and who He is to me. And it went from a journey of destination to one of discovery. And I started to actually enjoy discovering who God is and who I am to God. And what by His grace is He asking of me to do. Um, but I'm no longer just uh, hoping that if I do this, then God will do this. It's a life that, in, uh, with religion, uh, you are the uh, initiator. And we were never meant to be the initiator. We were never meant to initiate and God responds to us. We are the responders. God is and will always be the initiator. And He initiated grace. Jesus said He came uh, with grace and truth. So He initiated this. And I am responding uh, to grace. Um, but for someone like myself who got sucked up in a religious way of relating with God, what is the process, what are the stages that you go through of um, becoming more relational with God and less functional toward God in your way of thinking and in your posture? Um, and this is, um, as I look back over those that season of which the Lord began to set me free, um, this is just kind of like my recounting of what stages I went through um, and doing my best to communicate it so that you could also understand that you maybe you find yourself to be a highly functional Christian. What I mean by that is uh, the pressure's on you. Uh, you feel the weight of your eternity is on your shoulders. And just like the church in Galatia, Paul said, uh, who, who bewitched you? Uh, that you started in the faith, receiving by faith, but now you're trying to be perfected in the flesh. Uh, and so religion does. And when you fall short, it attaches shame, ultimately to leading to bondage over a person's life. So we really do want to be free from a religious way of relating with God into a relational um, before functional way of relating to God. So uh, the first... Um, stage that I, I faced myself personally is just a shock value. Uh, sh I was shocked about a few things. Um, I was shocked at the ladders that I had erected. I was shocked at how functional I had become. I was shocked at how much I or how often I transacted with God. 
and how many deals I was doing with God based upon my giving, my serving, my reading, my um, my prayer times uh, without even realizing it. And I think I, I, I was shocked by the motives of my heart. What was I after? The applause of man um, trying to get further ahead in the kingdom, promotion uh, when it comes to what he's called me to do. Uh, am I a better Christian and striving to be the best Christian? So those motives really were shocking and revealing to me. Um, the shock value comes from the disruption of the gospel message. Uh, when you truly begin to see the gospel for what it is, that um, you could do nothing and Jesus has done everything for you and now it's by the grace of God and Jesus living in you that your life is empowered. It's not based upon your strength or your commitment or your passion level, or your disciplines or your habits. All those things may be good, but they, they no longer are the driving force of your relationship with God. It is the power of God. It's the power of the gospel. So the gospel really interrupted my life. It, it reminded me that God is uh, relational um, before he's functional. And that was an eye-opening understanding that God longs to have this relationship with me and he longs to have the spotlight put back on Jesus and no longer on me. So as I relate to the Son, I can now have a relationship to the Father. And, and, and that was the transition that God was taking me from a functional Christian to a relational-minded Christian to where my motives were back where they belong. So there was a shock value that really disrupted my life in a very good way. He started to take ladders, which I always explain it. I exchanged the cross that saved me for ladders that are perfecting me. And he started to take those ladders. Uh, call, it's called the pruning process in the scriptures. Take those ladders out of my life. And I realized how much of my identity and my confidence before God went with those ladders. Why? Because th those were my measuring sticks. If you take those away, how do I measure how I'm doing with God? And the spotlight then begin to shift back to Christ. And now my confidence is in Christ alone. Or hopefully, I believe it is. Uh, the second level, I, was, I began to get excited. I began to get excited about what this new life could look like. What a life without these ladders actually meant to me. My motives started to shift in a pure way. I started to look forward to the spotlight being on Christ and people admiring not my walk with God, but the Christ that lives on the inside of me. And so I started to experience the joy of the gospel. I started to experience an immense amount of joy, feeling like I was tasting freedom for almost the very first time in so many years. I felt like I was back after I've drifted away. I was back to um, uh, realizing that I love him because he first loved me and the, the pressure was no longer on my love for him, but learning how to receive his love for me. And so I started to experience a, a high level of excitement and it, to the point where you start sharing it with everybody that God is relational before he's functional and you start talking about grace and his mercy and you start seeing yourself in a light that you've never seen yourself before and you start actually receiving from God based upon who you are to him and you're discovering things about your new father and so forth and so there's a joy that comes with the gospel. And that's why I believe David even said, he said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uh, so there's a joy that you lose when you, start to, uh, when you start to really become religious and transactional minded. Functional Christians, and what I mean by that is those who uh, are functional first, trying to attain a relationship with God, uh, there is a little joy inside their life because the measuring sticks that we use don't allow for joy to come from when you haven't reached your destination. Uh, so the joy of the gospel is what I experienced. The, the third stage that I faced, um, and I've watched a lot of people struggle through this, this is the detox uh, stage. This is where you start to get frustrated with the gospel. Uh, when I lost my measuring sticks, when I had no more allowance, no more ability in my theology to measure my relationship with God, I struggled uh, because I always measured according to the disciplines that I was applying on any given day. And so if my disciplines were intact and my habits were in place, man, I am a good Christian. But how do you measure that anymore? 
there's no longer this goal of mine to become a better Christian. Um, and when that goal was gone, okay, what now is my goal? And there's no longer a goal to just get closer to God because I started to discover that I, 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 God is already within me by His Spirit. He dwells within me. He's made His mode. Our spirit is one with Him. So, um, yeah, so I still experience the fact of why do I do this now? What am I living for? What am I going after? Uh, what, what's the motive of my heart now? Why do I read the Bible? Why do I have to go and pray if all this stuff has just been done and finished for me? Um, and so it was this realignment process that was real challenging. It's almost like going to the chiropractor to get things adjusted and it just doesn't seem to fit in the right places and you're feeling a sense of pain and so forth. And so I experienced for a good season the frustration of the gospel, frustration of how to explain it to people, being misunderstood, uh, not sure exactly where this is going to take me. Um, but I, I just pressed through. I realized that I was getting cleansed of a lot of junk, a lot of unnecessary baggage, a lot of uh, things that were unhealthy in my way of thinking when it comes to me as a believer, um, as a son uh, of God. And so I experienced a high level of frustration uh, right after the joy. So, you know, you kind of wonder um, how that works out. But uh, needless to say, as you push through, I experienced the lens shift. My perspective of the gospel now uh, was, was fresh. I saw things from a relational perspective. I saw life now from a finished work in Christ. I saw that the goal of my life is no longer reaching a destination. It's actually discovering who God is. That was a huge perspective shift in my life from destination to discovery. I, I, I soon found that I no longer want measuring sticks in my life because I'm not trying to compare and I'm not trying to feel better about myself. The perspective that God was already close to me was huge, so I'm no longer striving to get close to God. A perspective of the fact that I'm not trying to be a better Christian because I've been made complete in Christ and I'm trying to develop and grow into who I already am was a mind perspective or a huge shift. And how to become in the kingdom was different. Now, uh, before you become by what you do, and so if you want to become more pure, you, you act more pure. If you want to become more righteous, you, you do more righteous act. You don't need to turn off airplane mode. And so the perspective of the gospel was I started to shift from this um, how do you become to you receive by becoming. How do you receive? You receive by believing. And so my world changed completely when I started to learn how to receive from God. Um, and then uh, probably the last perspective is, I, I love to ask people qu this question, who is the best Christian you know? And my mind shifted from having somebody that I was striving to be like to uh, realizing that there are no best Christians. There's only weak, feeble Christians who have been empowered by God's grace to do what he's do, done. And um, it's like Paul said, by the grace of God that I am. So I, I started to have these perspective shifts that really were influenced by the gospel. And it started to enlighten me to a different way of living. And uh, the last stage, which of course I'm in and will always continue to be in, is just becoming by the power of the gospel. I am becoming the man that God called me to become without the spotlight being on me. And what I mean by spotlight is the pressure's not on me. I'm not the one striving or earning or trying uh, to, to, to keep this Christian life in the right direction. I am trusting and I'm leaning and I'm resting in the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within me and the, the fact that my Father knows how to lead me and knows how to guide me and He knows how to correct me. And so becoming is um, where you start actually experiencing the transformative power of the gospel. The gospel starts to actually be the fuel of my life. It's not me and my commitments and I will do this and I, I will never do this, Lord, and I, I promise you this, Lord. And you know, you, you have these strong statements that you make, but you consistently fail. And so I realize uh, me becoming, becoming what? A son uh, of love and rest that I'm learning how to love like my brother Jesus, my Savior Jesus, my Lord Jesus, but I'm also learning how to rest 
as a son, that I'm not no longer striving, I'm enjoying, I'm receiving, and I'm becoming as a result a son that represents God wherever I'm at with his presence, with his grace to those who desperately need to experience God. So, um, and that's the process of freedom where you, you know, the prison doors are unlocked, but unless you actually start to embrace grace, you actually don't walk through those prison doors. Um, and I started to experience freedom where I'm no longer uh, transacting with God. I'm no longer trying to get something from God. I'm no longer initiating God and Him responding to me. He's the initiator. He's the one that actually came and loved me first when I was unlovable. And I am responding to that. So the life of, you know, this, this stages ultimately translates into what I would call the responsive life. Whoops, responsive life, where I am now learning how to respond to who God is for me and to who I am to God. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section, but this is kind of the process and the stages that God took me through. Um, the season was, of course, had its challenges, but also had its thrills. And uh, I wanted to share it with you today. So hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for subscribing. God bless. Bye-bye.